Hello, everybody. This is Afrometrics News and Research Based News on the major events of this past week relevant to the Black world. There are a few topics that we're going to be discussing this week. One, a new study on gender discrimination in South African wages, racial bias in a stimulus package, African Union awards for innovation, the slavery dictionary, which discloses details of investors in the transatlantic slave trade, and the relationship between racial identity and academic achievement. Thank you all for joining. A new study came out this month in the Journal of Developing Areas. It was a study on the topic of gender wage discrimination in South Africa. And it was written by Bianca Fisher, Duduzi Biase, Frederick Kirsten, and September Ruderick. So they examined the impact of affirmative action policies by investigating the trends in wage discrimination and disparities by occupation between the years of 1997 and 2015. And they found that differences in earning between males and females fell significantly during the period in question, so there was progress. However, the authors warned that the results should not entirely be interpreted as a decline in discrimination, but also an increase in the productivity of females over time. They also found that gender discrimination continues to persist persist, particularly in senior level positions and managerial positions. Also this week, the Journal of Blacks in Higher Education highlighted a UCLA study which found racial bias in the federal stimulus packages impact during the um, pandemic since March. The study found that the federal loans from the Paycheck Protection Program supported 5.8 jobs per 100 residents in Black neighborhoods compared to 8.1 per 100 residents in white communities. So there's a disparity in the impact of the loans. Neighborhoods in California whose populations are majority Black, Latino, or Asian benefited less than white neighborhoods um, from the $500 billion in forgivable loans distributed nationwide through the Paycheck Protection Program during the pandemic. So this is institutional race, racial disparities and outcomes from the Paycheck Protection Act. The African Union also has distributed innovation grants or, or awards for outstanding projects. And the winners have received 20 between 20 and $60,000 US. They include several innovative uh, projects and each one of them is related to the pandemic in the sense that they facilitate communication and learning during social distancing. For example, one project is the BAG, Building a Generation, which is a gamified platform that offers real-time access to experience-based learning for university students. The second is called Learnable, which is an, a teaching assistant that allows teachers to compose and distribute lessons via a dedicated mobile app and WhatsApp on people's phones. And three is an innovation called Chalk, Chalkboard Education, which is a remote teaching and learning toolkit that can help teachers and parents during the COVID-19 crisis. The Times London reported that the largest ever database of investors in the slave trade will be created by British academics in a project highlighting ties to modern firms and backed by government funding. So perhaps the most interesting thing about this report is the political implications or the potential political implications of a project like this. So the research is gonna provide detailed biographies of investors across this 250 year history longer than 250 years, but I imagine they have data for that uh, 250 years. That it'll include shareholders and slave trading companies and those investing through syndicates and independent slave trading voyages. And again, perhaps the most um, direct implication will be on the growing re movement for reparations. 
Also, Chronicle of Blacks in Higher Education reported about a new longitudinal study by researchers at the University of Pittsburgh, and it shows that African-American youth who receive positive images about their racial group in school achieve better grades uh, one to two years later. So this study was particularly interesting because so many of the, the studies on the benefits of racial identity are cross-sectional studies. They're studies that are, are taken at a single moment in time and most likely through questionnaires or surveys. Um, in any event, a study like this is able to track how exposure to positive racial messages have an impact over time. And um, it's a, a really good contribution to the literature on racial identity and racial socialization. So very interesting study. Another thing that was reported out of Chicago, but being experienced nationwide, uh, I wanted to mention in Chicago, there's renters who are jobless due to the pandemic and they've been unable to pay their rent. However, the state moratorium on evictions is no longer going to protect them um, as it once did because of new changes in the moratorium. So to explain the new rules, I want to read the following ex excerpt, which states that tenants are required to, to send a signed form to their landlord stating that the pandemic has prevented them from paying all a part of their rent. Um, to be eligible for eviction protection, a tenant must meet specific requirements. Those prerequisites include the inability to pay rent due to loss of income or health expenses because of the coronavirus, risk of becoming homeless, having to share a home, or move into another's house where too many people reside together already. Besides, an individual must not expect to earn more than $99,000 in 2020, um, was not required to declare income in 2019 or received the federal stimulus check from the CARES Act in 2020, and renters should also make every effort possible to pay rent in partial payments. If the tenant does not present the signed form to the, the lesser, the landlord can begin the eviction process. So this means that less people are going to be protected by the moratorium on evictions in the very near future. In, in Illinois, it's January the 11th. But this is something that's being experienced due to the uh, pandemic all over the country. Why I'm telling you about this uh, new development is because evictions are most likely to occur in Black communities. And also because more than half of African Americans and Latinx people in Chicago have experienced job loss since March 19 compared to 40% of whites. So this is, these policies making adjust, adjustments to the, the moratorium on evictions is disproportionately going to affect the black community. But these are some issues that have occurred in the past week, studies that came out in the past week news articles that came out in the past week that I have not seen represented in mainstream media. That's why I chose these particular ones. And again, thank you everybody for watching. This has been Afrometrics News, research-based news podcast, and you can visit us at afrometrics.org and I'll see you all next week. Thank you so much. <laughs>